coming up on Hoosier Sports Night. Indiana women's basketball gears up for the postseason. And we go to the mat with a story that hits close to home. This is Hoosier Sports Night. Hello and welcome to Hoosier Sports Night. I'm Brianna Baylog. And I'm Josie Broyles. Brianna, tough loss for IU women's basketball the other night. How are you feeling? Uh, not that great after that Caitlin Clark buzzer beater, but I'm excited to see what they do in Minnesota. Speaking of the Indiana women's basketball team, they finished their regular season on the road with a top 10 matchup against sixth ranked Iowa. Our Alex Hines has the recap. It was heartbreak at the buzzer for Indiana women's basketball as they lost in an instant classic against sixth ranked Iowa 86 to 85 on a buzzer beating three from Caitlin Clark. Chloe just, uh, you know, gets tripped a little bit and, um, you know, that thing could have gone either way. But as I always remind the kids, um, it's a 40 minute game and there's a lot of reps in there that uh, we all wish we could have back. It never comes down to one play. Iowa got out to a hot start and held the lead for a large portion of the game. The Hoosiers, though, continued to claw back, keeping them within striking distance down the stretch. We just kept fighting back, and I think that's one of the big things to know about this team is we're fighters, and we're going to fight to the very, very end. And we came back from what could have been a really, really big, ugly lead and made it a really fun game. I'm really, really proud of our group. Um, once again, they showed how tough they are. Um, how they are one of the very best teams in the country um, in, in terms of just the way they fight. Free throws were key for Indiana down the stretch. They shot 94% on the game, and there were two key trips down the stretch, one from Chloe Moore McNeil and then another one from Mackenzie Holmes. Holmes knocked down both of her free throws at the line to give Indiana a two-point lead with the second and a half to play. I call it absolute toughness. I mean, you have to be able to step up in, those, in that moment. Right with that crowd uh, that was so loud today, and and uh, be calm and and knock and knock those shots in. The Hoosiers now set their sights on the Big Ten tournament in Minneapolis. I mean, I'm I'm disappointed. I know they're disappointed, uh, but um, you know we do what we always do, and that is uh, either we we feel good or we feel bad for 24 hours, and then we uh, return and we get back to work. From Iowa City, Alex Hines, Iowa TV Sports. Despite the loss, Indiana remains the top seed in the Big Ten Tournament. They will face the winner of today's Nebraska versus Michigan State game in the quarterfinals tomorrow. Follow along with IUS TV Sports for live coverage from the tournament this weekend in Minneapolis. Indiana baseball went down to Austin for a weekend series against the Texas Longhorns. Join us in studio to give us the breakdown is IUS TV Sports baseball reporter Kara Adams. Kara, over to you. Thanks, Josie. That's right. The Hoosiers ended up going 1-2 and two against the Texas Longhorns. The Hoosiers dropped the Friday and Saturday matchups 4-2 and 5-2, respectfully. Senior Ben Saylor held the Longhorns offense out with five shutout innings on Friday. Saturday's matchup got away from Indiana, but they stopped Texas from sweeping with their 4-2 victory on Sunday. The game changer for the Hoosiers was their four-run six inning, solidified by sophomore Luke Sinnard pitching five successful innings. Indiana added to this win at home with a 13-2 victory against Butler this past Tuesday. I have more from Bart Kaufman Field on this dominant win. Indiana baseball got the win tonight 13-2 against a strong Butler team. Butler stayed in the game for a while, but by the end of the second inning, it was all the Hoosiers. I, I feel good about where we are offensively. We're going to hit. I, I don't worry about that. Um, but it's, it's you know, the first two or three weeks, and you're still finding the lineup. Guys are still kind of finding their, 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 their stride a little bit. And, yeah, it was, uh, it was a good day. With a total of 13 hits and 12 RBIs today, it was an all-around Hoosier effort on the offensive side. Sophomore Carter Matheson led the Hoosiers in offense today. It's a uh, you know, main thing of us, get on teams early, put them away early. And, you know, we try to say, you know, once one guy gets a hit, you know, keep it rolling. Just pass it on to the next is a big thing. On the mound, the Hoosiers saw nine different pitchers today. You kind of build a bullpen that you can kind of get to the fifth or sixth and then bring stuff out of the pen. I think it's important to, to build them the right way, make sure they're in positions to be successful, and then start to, to 
kind of throw them in the deep end a little bit as we go. The Hoosiers will look to carry this momentum from today's game into their weekend series at the Keith LeClaire Classic in Greenville, North Carolina. For IOS TV Sports, I'm Kara Adams. Indiana men's basketball look to continue their, moment, their momentum from the win at Purdue when they face off against Iowa. Josh Bodie has more from Tuesday night. Iowa came out of the gates firing, starting the game on an 8-0 run. That set the tone for their offense, which the Hoosiers could not stop the whole night. Nothing we did defensively that we worked on worked. We just, we weren't there for some reason. It was just a full just meltdown of our defensive game plan, and um, they, they exploited it, and they took advantage of it, and they hit shots, so credit to them. They just competed, man. They, they came in here and kicked our It was just that simple. It was Chris Murray that was the spark plug for that 8-0 run to start the game, and he's been a Hoosier killer all season. 30 in the first matchup and 26 tonight. He was just red hot against the Hoosier defense. When you get a guy like that going like that, um, his teammates feed off of that. And so um, I feel like after Chris got going, a lot of other guys started hitting shots, and then all chaos just breaks down. After a lopsided result like that, the focus is on the next game. A game like this, you got to wash it out because we got another game um, Sunday, and we got to get ready for that and prepare for it. So um, we got to have a quick mentality, quick turnaround, and uh, get ready to work and practice. In Assembly Hall, I'm Josh Bodie, IUS TV Sports. Indiana will end its regular season against Michigan on Sunday. With the Big Ten standing so close at the top, this will be a crucial game for the Hoosiers' hopes of getting a double bye in the Big Ten tournament. Indiana softball traveled down to Greensboro, North Carolina for the UNCG Invitational this past weekend. The Hoosiers started off Friday in dominant fashion against the Delaware Blue Hens. Sophomore Sarah Stone got the bats going with a two-run home run out of left field. Stone's homer was the first of four in the game for Indiana, which ended in an 11-0 win in five innings. On Saturday, the team played Delaware again, and this came away with a closer 6-4 win. In their second game of the day against host UNC Greensboro, the Hoosiers allowed four homers and lost game to 8-5. The Hoosiers had another doubleheader on Sunday against the UConn Huskies and the UNC Greensboro Spartans. The Huskies had Indiana shut down the entire game and would win 5-0. In the final game of the weekend, Indiana's offense was firing on all cylinders. Through 14 hits from eight different players, the Hoosiers rooted the Spartans by a score of 17-2. Team 50 is back in action this weekend at Andy Moore Field for the Hoosier Classic. Coming up after the break, we crown our Hoosier Highlight Athlete of the Week. And we recap track and field's blazing finish at the Indoor Big Ten Championships. You're watching Hoosier Sports Night. Welcome back to Hoosier Sports Night. Now joining us in studio for this week's Hoosier Highlight is our very own Drew Rosenberg. Thanks, Brianna and Josie. Indiana men's basketball beat Purdue in West Lafayette for the first time in 10 years on Saturday, and our Athlete of the Week was key to the victory for the Hoosiers. For the 15th ranked Hoosiers, freshman guard Jalen Huchifino has been critical to their success, and Saturday was no different. In a game where Trey Shaxon Davis scored a season-low 10 points, Huchifino stepped up and made play after play for the Hoosiers. He scored a career-high 35 points and had 7 rebounds to lead the Hoosiers to their biggest victory of the season. To add to his accolades, Hood Chafino became the first IU freshman with multiple 30-point games since Eric Gordon in 2008. With the Big Ten tournament approaching, Hood Chafino has found his groove in February, averaging over 16 points per game for the month, and he'll look to continue that level of play. Back to you at the desk. With the Big Ten tournament and NCAAs just around the corner, we take a look back at this year's IU wrestling squad. Our Riley Woodall spotlights how the Hoosiers took successful strides this season and how one man who came back home to Indiana made all the difference. Cutter on his back and South gets the ball! And Wilkinson Hall erupts! Just like South Michael Jackson said, take a look at yourself and make crowd. that change. Indiana wrestling is having a remarkable comeback season after going 3-8 and eight a year ago. The difference? Three things. New attitude, winning close matches, and a little help from a familiar face. 
I've always wanted to be a, a college coach for wrestling. Four-time All-American and former Nebraska wrestler C.J. Red is in his first season with the Hoosiers as a volunteer coach. An opportunity that came about from a lifelong relationship and a chance meeting 2,000 miles away from Bloomington. I think it was Las Vegas. Um, I was out with Old Man Red. That's what we call the dad, Old Man Red. Um, and I had asked him, you know, what's CJ up to after he graduates Nebraska? Uh, you know, I would love to have him. I knew Chad was going to come back, and I knew he wanted to, he wanted to do something with coaching. And he's always wanted to be a wrestling coach. So it just uh, just talking to people, man. I, you know, word of mouth goes a long way. After talking to Angel, he kind of knew exactly. He, like my dad told him exactly what I was trying to do. He knew what I was trying to do, and he was like, "We want you guys here." So I was like, "Really?" Like, yes, and I was just like, well, let's do it. Red grew up an Indiana boy and had an incredible undefeated career at New Palestine High School. His father, Chad Red Sr., coached him. Oh, that's the best coach, my dad. Uh, he was my favorite coach, you know. He was one coach, other than all of my other coaches, he could get under my skin, you know. Kind of pissed me off a lot, you know. And sometimes we walk into practice, we're having a good practice, he might be throwing jokes at me and I might not be feeling them at all, you know? So maybe we get to wrestle that day and I'm trying to hurt my dad a little bit. I actually never wanted to do it. I coached Chad growing all the way up and I thought he was gonna go to Cathedral. I was coaching and I thought my time was up and um, he honestly wanted me to continue to coaching. I didn't think I was gonna be the same person I am with my dad versus with somebody else. I didn't think that was gonna happen if I went to somebody else. I just didn't believe it. I only believed in my dad at that time. Not even one month into his first season of coaching with Indiana, Red needed surgery on his brain. He had two aneurysms. But the overwhelming support from the IU team, coupled with Red's positivity, got him through the scary situation. After he had surgery, we all went up there. We, you know, and multiple athletes went up on their own. Uh, we took a group up there and, you know, we we're by his bedside telling him, hey, we got your back and we will be here for you whenever you need us. Uh, it's, it, it's been so much support and they support him so much. I, I couldn't even really begin to tell you where, but I remember just those guys always coming up to the hospital. The more you let the negative in and you start seeing more negative, negative's gonna happen, you know? That's why I keep on saying positive, positive, positive. I see, I hit negative situations all the time but I still have a lot more positive in my head. And if the negative happens, we're gonna keep working through it. Even if the positive happens, we're gonna keep working through it, you know, cause life's gonna keep going the whole time. That positive mindset is what has carried Red through his life both on and off the mat. Something he hopes to instill at IU. It's like the stereotype, you gotta be so serious all the time, you know, but in reality, that's not how it should be. It's just a sport, um, you know, we should laugh about it. Uh, you know, like, yeah, it's hard, but at the same time, you're doing it with your brothers and, you know, you're building all these bonds and having a guy like CJ come in here and show that and be a coach that's not just serious, but that, you know, can joke around with them and, you know, just make things a little bit more humorous. When he steps into the room, he brings in energy, um, whether it's on the mat or off the mat. I mean, if you go back and watch him wrestle in his time in Nebraska, I think every time he stepped on the mat, it was high energy match, um, and then even off the net, he's, he's always smiling, he's always cracking jokes, so I think he just brings energy to the table, and I think that's what our team needs. I'm still almost a guy on the team, you know, I'm still almost a wrestler still, but think about it as what I've done, I want you to kind of take a little bit of what I've done and kind of put it in your ear a little bit when you're out there and you're going against somebody very tough that you don't believe you can beat, you know, just keep wrestling, keep wrestling, something's going to happen, just keep wrestling. Guys enjoy being around him. You know, they're, they're calling him at night, they want to play Fortnite with him, and he's bad. He's bad at Fortnite, but they love that he can make them laugh, and you know, that's awesome to see. Red may be bad at Fortnite, but where he lacks in video game skills, he has meaningful relationships in spades. And it's that strong bond between individuals as wrestlers and as people that last a lifetime and make the season-long grind worth it. I've always preached to him that I want other people to know him also as a really good person. You know, and again, I know people know him. Oh, he's a four-time champ. Or he did really well in Nebraska. He's an All-American. But just um, having a good mindset of being a good person and letting people know that that's who you are and wanting to rub off as many people as you can, trying to touch as many people as you can as long as you can until the man upstairs takes you away from the world. And I just try to 
make a little joke or something, put a little smile on their face just because I know if I'm down like that, I'm not gonna be wanting to be the next hour, you know, the next day, week, or just being negative head down, kind of crying a little bit. I'd rather somebody come over there and make a little joke that can put a smile on my face to make me a little lightened up. From Bloomington, Riley Woodall, IUS TV Sports. Who's just on three? Who's just on three? One, two, three. Who's yours? Indiana track and field team found themselves in a tight race in Geneva, Ohio for the Big Ten Championships this past weekend. The men's team placed fourth, which included a first place finish in the pole vault by Nathan Stone. Antonio Ladler and Jake Gebhardt both added second place finishes, with Ladler running the 60 meter dash and Gebhardt in both the 3,000 and 5,000 meter runs. The women's team placed fifth in the tournament and similar to the men's side saw one Hoosier take home gold. With Hope Purcell winning the pentathlon distance runner, Jenna Barker set a new PR and placed third in the 3,000 meter run. It was, uh, I would say, one of the best races I've probably ever had. I was sitting in last place for the first half of the race, which was not at all where I was supposed to be. But I trusted myself, I trusted my training, slowly made my way up throughout the race. And in the last 100 meters, I found myself in third. The Hoosiers ended the weekend with 11 total medals as they look to prepare for the national championships beginning on March 10th. The Indiana women's water polo team looked to keep the momentum going into Irvine, California for the Calbus Classic. The Hoosiers played against number 7 Arizona State, number 23 LMU, and finished the weekend against Pomona Pitzer. Against Arizona State, points were hard to come by for both sides, but the Sun Devils held Indiana scoreless in the second quarter to win 5-3. Indiana was finally able to get a spark on the offense against Loyola Marymount. However, the defense struggled, giving the Hoosiers another loss of 12 to 11. Freshman Grace Kingler finished the game with a hat trick. Looking to get back on track, the Hoosiers took on Pomona Pitzer. IU was in control for the first half of the game. However, a 5-0 run from the Sage Hens flipped the script. Indiana was able to cut the lead down to two before falling 11 to eight. Indiana has an opportunity to bounce back this Saturday at the Billingsley Aquatic Center as the Hoosiers take on the Stanford Cardinal. The Indiana men's swim and dive teams look to defend their Big Ten championship title last weekend in Ann Arbor, Michigan. For the second year in a row, the men's teams in Big Ten season champs. Senior Brendan Burns was crowned Big Ten swimmer of the championship after winning all five of his events, including going a career best in the 200 back that set a meet record, program record, and pool record. In the 200 fly, these were just two of the nine pool records Indiana shattered over the four days. Junior Warren Briggs also had a career best placing first in the mile with a time of 1456.97. Men's divers Carson Tyler, Quinn Henninger, and Andrew Capobianco swept the podium, earning Capobianco and Tyler Big Ten Divers of the Championship. The Hoosiers have one last invite before closing their season, competing in the NCAA Championship starting March 9th. This past Saturday, Indiana Women's Tennis hosted Western Michigan at the IU Tennis Center. In doubles, the team of Lars Schneider and Sabi Nihalani served up a bagel to win their fifth consecutive doubles match. Alexandra Stikalescu and Rose Hugh would clinch the doubles point with a 6-3 win. In singles, Stikalescu kicked things off with a pair of breadsticks. Mila Majic and Nicole Teodosecu would steal the 4-0 Hoosier victory with, vict with straight wins. The team improves to 7-3 on the season and will next face Northwestern this Sunday. Indiana men's tennis fell to number 24 ranked Cornell this past Saturday. The Hoosiers were swept in the singles with Patrick Fletchall losing a tight three-setter. The team's only win came from Luka Vukovic and Akanj Kumar in doubles. They are now 9-3 on the season with all three of those defeats coming against ranked opponents. Despite not being able to secure a road win so far this spring, Hoosiers are currently ranked 54th in the ITA National Rankings. The East Coast trip will continue as IU plays Princeton in New Jersey tomorrow and Yale on Sunday. Now joining us with this week's Candy Stripe Calendar Report is Griffin Healy. Griffin? Thanks, Brianna. The Big Ten Wrestling Championships will have two sessions at Ann Arbor, Michigan. The first one will start at 10 a.m., while the next one will start at 5.30 p.m. The number one seeded Indiana women's basketball team will start off Friday with a 12.30 p.m. game in the Big Ten Tournament. To round out the night, the men's tennis team will take on Princeton at 6 p.m. at Princeton University. And on Saturday, Indiana softball will start the Hoosier Classic at, uh, with a game against Wisconsin Green Bay at 12.15 p.m. 
Then, Indiana Water Polo will host Stanford for a 1 p.m. match at the Councilman Billingsley Aquatic Center. If the women's basketball team wins their first game, they'll move on and play at 2.30 p.m. The day wraps up with the third session of the Big Ten Wrestling Championships at 1 p.m. and the fourth and final session at 4.30 p.m. On Sunday, men's tennis is at Yale, while women's tennis will host Northwestern. Both matches are at 11 a.m. The men's basketball team will host Michigan on Senior Day for the final game of the regular season at 4.30 p.m. The women's team, if they continue winning, will play at the Big Ten Championship game at 5 p.m. That is your Candy Stripe calendar for the weekend. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Griffin. And that's our show for the week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at IUS TV Sports to keep up with all the latest in IU athletics. For our production crew behind us, I'm Josie Broyles. And I'm Brianna Baylog. We'll see you next week.